everyone. I'm Deborah Benben, a professor in exercise physiology in the Department of Health and Exercise Science at the University of Oklahoma. I appreciate the opportunity to share some of my research interests and contributions to the NAK membership today. I also want to thank Jim Morrow, Barb Ainsworth, Kathleen Jans, and Gil Reeve for nominating me for NAK fellowship last year. My talk today will focus on one of my main research areas, circulating factors as biomarkers of musculoskeletal function. First, since I'm a relatively new member, I wanted to start with some background information about myself. Um, I was born and raised in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada, where I received my bachelor's degree in physical education. From there, I moved to Saskatchewan, where I obtained my master's degree in exercise physiology at the University of Saskatchewan. I then moved to Illinois to continue my graduate studies. There I obtained my PhD in exercise physiology at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. My first faculty position was at Truman State University in Missouri, where I taught for five years. Then I relocated to my current position as a faculty member at the University of Oklahoma. This slide shows a summary of my main research foci over my career. If you focus on uh, the last bullet point here, um, currently I'm focused on studying the interrelationships between bone and muscle function and how this relates to age-related changes in these tissues. However, I also have training in endocrinology, which has supported a common theme in my research, specifically measuring bone and muscle biomarkers, including a new research area which is the assessment of microRNAs. And all of these tie into the assessment of biomarkers for bone and muscle function. When thinking of bone metabolism, the most common output, the most common outcome is bone density assessed by DEXA. However, bone density is a static measure that gives us a snapshot of a person's bone status at a given time point and is determined by the balance between bone formation and bone resorption rates in the skeleton. We can get more information though about the rates of bone formation and resorption by measuring bone markers in the blood. For example, there are proteins and enzymes produced by bone cells that reflect bone formation, such as osteocalcin, bone-specific alkaline phosphatase, and P1MP. Other biomarkers reflect rates of bone resorption, such as the enzyme TRAP5B and CTX1, which is a breakdown product of type 1 collagen. In my research, I typically measure bone density and bone biomarker responses to both acute exercise and to training interventions. Some of my recent studies examine the effectiveness of whole body vibration for improving bone and muscle function. Whole body vibration is generating much interest world, worldwide as a non-pharmacological intervention for stimulating both muscle and bone adaptations. There are two types of vibration platforms that can be used um, as interventions and the intensity of the vibration stimulus is affected by the frequency and amplitude of the vibrations which determine the acceleration or g-forces that are placed upon the body. This picture here on the left shows the two types of platforms. The synchronized vibration platform induces the vibration in a vertical direction, whereas the side alternating platform on the right has a teeter-totter movement. When the person stands on the platform, the vibrations are transmitted to the skeleton and can be directly sensed by bone cells and stimulate bone cell responses. The vibrations also increase motor unit activity in the muscle, resulting in stronger muscle contractions that overall will place greater loads on the skeleton. The first whole body vibration study I conducted was an eight month intervention in postmenopausal women, where one group did high intensity resistance exercise training and another group had whole body vibration exposures 
combined with the same resistance exercise protocol. We used a synchronous type of vibration platform for the study to see if whole body vibration would enhance the bone and muscle gains compared to resistance exercise alone. This figure shows the upper body strength changes, but we saw similar results for the lower body as well. Um, the women who had the whole body vibration exposures with resistance exercise as represented by the dark bar, um, you can see that they had greater strength gains uh, for most of the exercises compared to the resistance exercise alone group. And for example, if you look here at seated row, you can see that that strength gain was almost double for the group that had the vibration um, in addition to the resistance exercise. So um, as a result then of these findings, we saw that whole body vibration did have an added benefit for muscle function. In addition to intervention studies, I think it is important to assess how biomarkers respond to single bouts of different types of exercise. So I have conducted quite a few randomized crossover studies comparing different exercise protocols. For example, in this study, we compared bone marker responses to a bout of resistance exercise with and without whole body vibration in young women. This figure shows that sclerostin, a protein that inhibits bone formation, was significantly decreased 30 minutes after the vibration condition, but not after the resistance exercise only condition. MicroRNAs are a new research focus for me. However, this topic has been rapidly emerging in the literature over the past 10 years. Micrornas are short non-coding RNAs produced by many tissues that can be released into the blood. Since they are stable in the blood, they can be measured as biomarkers of tissue physiology and disease. But they also can be taken up by different tissues and have a biological effect. The primary function of microRNAs is to inhibit gene expression, thereby affecting signaling pathways in the cells. Based on animal and human studies, there are many microRNAs involved in the regulation of age-related changes in physiological function, such as inflammation, bone loss, and muscle loss that lead to age-related diseases. What we don't know at this point is how exercise can affect microRNA expression in such a way as to alter the negative consequences of aging. My lab has conducted several micro, microRNA studies to date. Jiaojing Chen, my former doctoral student, did the first study comparing selected microRNA expression based on bone and muscle status in postmenopausal women. The women were divided into groups based on whether they had osteoporosis and or uh, sarcopenia. This figure shows an example, uh, mirror 21. This microRNA uh, promotes activity of osteoclast cells, and these are the bone cells that are responsible for bone resorption. So if, micro, if MIR-21 is upregulated, that means that it could be associated with greater rates of bone resorption and bone loss. In this figure, there was no difference in microRNA expression for the four groups. The NN is the normal women, um, the second group here, the OO, means that they had osteoporosis. The SOP means that they had both osteoporosis and sarcopenia. And then uh, we had a small number of women who just had sarcopenia. However, when we compared just based on bone status, so comparing osteoporotic versus non-osteoporotic women, we found that MIR-21 was upregulated. And this suggests that it may be a useful biomarker of bone status. Another microRNA study was conducted by Sam Buchanan, another former doctoral student in my lab. He investigated microRNA responses to single bouts of resistance exercise and whole body vibration in postmenopausal women. This figure shows the responses for near 21 expression. 
And what we found interesting is that if you look at the vibration only condition here, the blue line, um, near 21 was significantly downregulated 24 hours after the vibration session, um, but not after the resistance exercise session. So again, this is suggesting that MIR-21 may be a, a useful biomarker of bone status and, and bone responses um, to different types of interventions. I would like to conclude by identifying research gaps that tie in with the social justice theme of the conference. First, we need more information about the effectiveness of whole body vibration interventions in underserved populations, including the old, old, and in patient populations such as cancer patients, diabetics, and pediatric patients. Also, there is much more work needed on the use of microRNAs as biomarkers in clinical populations, such as individuals with amputations and those with age-related bone loss and muscle mass loss. MicroRNAs have potential to be very useful, um, to be a very useful means for tracking the effectiveness of interventions in a variety of populations. Thank you for your attention. I wish to thank my former grad students and collaborators, as well as my sources of funding, all of which have contributed to the success of my research program.